Hi everyone! Um, so here we go for the first time in, uh, I don't know how long, <laughs> uh, pick a card reading. I have two choices and I'm using my new deck, the uh, Gilded Tarot Royale uh, from Ciro Mar Marchetti, I think it is. And um, I do wish to thank people who've sent me donations over time. I always forget to say that, but I am grateful for that because I like to buy new card decks regularly and that helps me to do that, right? So, um, this reading is what your soul needs you to do. And, uh, well, then, of course, you need to need that as well. But also your soul needs that uh, for soul growth, right? And uh, we have two choices. And the one, number one, this one is, um, both are phoenix skulls, by the way. And uh, the one to the left is flower agate. And one to the right is white jade, ivory jade. So please make your choice, just, just feel, right? And uh, which calls to you most. If it's difficult uh, with the phoenix calls, I'll just move them out of the way so you, so you can just see the cards. This is uh, one card from your deck and here the same thing. So you can do that. <clears throat> and uh, tune into the card to feel which is the one you need. And I'm going to start the reading. Right, your first card for the numbers one, um, what your soul needs you to do. We have the tower card. Now that's quite a serious intense card to start off with, isn't it? I've got a clarifier for it. Um, this is... Um, that either something happens or will happen uh, out of the blue or you get an insight, you, an understanding uh, also all of a sudden that is so huge that it completely uproots and destroys everything that is comfortable to you. It's basically the tower is your... Uh, what you build up to be your comfort zone where you can basically sit behind the walls and feel good and um, even though it may feel uncomfortable it, it this this is necessary to happen and it should not be avoided and your soul needs you to go through this right that, because this that's what the reading is about it is important and the clarifier we have the world and both major arcana cards so that's yeah this isn't a, a big thing for you for your soul but also for you uh, and then we have the world to clarify this and it is it is the end of a cycle and that must end it's completion. If you don't have this, you, you won't have completion either. And you remain stuck and you won't evolve anymore. And, and that's not why you're here. Um, and this is be because of that ending and completion and um, the old falling away. It is also liberating. And um, yeah, that doesn't mean to say that people like, <laughs> most people dread this tower moment uh, or happening. And yeah, that's quite understandable as well, because everything you knew and is familiar or that is your comfort thing will fall away. And yeah, that's not going to feel pleasant. And, uh, but you have to, to do that. You have to go through that. You shouldn't avoid it. And yeah, you need that change. And when the dust settles, you can rebuild. Oh gosh, I have a kitten and <laughs> she, she is uh, harassing me as I'm Seth here. <laughs> anyhow, um, when the dust settles, you can rebuild something entirely new that is better fitting for you, who you are now and where you want to go, really, as well. And then we're going to have a look at your next cards. We have the Seven of Swords. Again, quite the, quite the card, right? Um, 
it says that you have to be mindful not to have a knee-jerk response to the tower. Um, maybe it, that tower is caused by a person. Doesn't have to be. Can also just be like I said, you having an insight or a situation, and not just a person. But uh, that tower happening might cause you to want to lash out, to have a knee-jerk response. But it's not really helpful to, to do that, to give in to these feelings, because it's not going to work out very well for you, um, even though you may not see it coming, because it is ill-planned. Likely, this move is not planned for at all, because he can't even take all the swords with him. He has to leave two behind. And the thing is that maybe later on you leave two swords with the, well, let's say, quote, quote, right, between quote, um, uh, enemy, you leave them with weapons. And it might come back at you to have this knee-jerk reaction or to lash out, and you might get stabbed in the back later on. So it's very important that you just don't do that, right? It's, it's also not... Uh, a very grounded uh, an, uh, thing to do, not an action from an, uh, a well-balanced and empowered person to lash out. It's it's really just ego, like, ah, I'm going to get even. That's not really helpful, not for you either. Uh, so be mindful of that. And I had a clarifier for it because, well, we started off with two quite intense cards. And we have then the temperance card. And that says this, well, basically what I just said. Um, it advises to find and keep a balance between extremes. And that can be any extreme. It can be extreme in acting, in behaving, in uh, feeling, in thinking. They have to try to find a balance on the inside and um, yeah, and then, and then you will get through that tower moment with ease as well. And um, so you have to allow the liberating tower moment to occur. Balance yourself inside and out. And then you will come to see um, that it was actually the completion and liberation that you needed, the world, right? And the ending of a cycle, a cycle of the old, that actually didn't serve you at all anymore. So maybe you know this, uh, maybe you've been trying to avoid this by staying in a situation and knowing full well that it's just had its time, it's passed the sell-by date, whether that's a job or a relationship, it does, oh gosh, Nila, that's my, <laughs> my kitten again, <laughs> oh dear, anyhow, yeah, her, her cat tree is right behind me, so she can just reach out and get on my chair, anyhow, um, it can be anything, and but you, you, you have to go through this, it's important for your growth and your soul growth as well, uh, then we go to your next card, all right, your next card. We have the Emperor, another major arcana card. The Temperance was as well, by the way. So a lot of major arcana cards. So all big things, big lessons and things you have to do. Um, the Emperor it says that what you rebuild after the tower has gone, when you've gone through that moment and things have calmed down, you found the balance from the Temperance on the inside, um, you, you can rebuild, right? Um, and what you rebuild will have to be well planned and have a solid foundation as well. And um, your next card, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Emperor more, don't, don't worry. But the next card is the Lovers. And when we combine the Emperor with the Lovers then it says that you shouldn't act on a whim, but think 
things tr uh, through really well. It's like the, um, the this is actually making a choice. Apparently, in the past, the lovers card was named choice, not lovers. So it is about making a choice. This card and uh and and healthy choices with that of course right so yeah the combined it's that making healthy choices and uh plan well have a so make a solid foundation and also don't make choices uh based on one aspect of something that appeals to you um like for instance you may uh, choose work or you know whatever I'm just gonna take an example work that seems to pay well but it doesn't have much of a future and then you're gonna be happy with that and uh, for a very short while and then uh, in the end it turns out you're stuck in that position in that situation there is no no nothing, no promotions, no nothing, not going anywhere from that position. And then you have gotten yourself in that situation because you were blinded by the element of, by the aspects of money, finances. So make sure that you make healthy choices when you start to rebuild. Um, so that you have, uh, that what whatever it is that you're going to rebuild will still be right for you and satisfying for you in, in the long run, right? In the future as well. Um, uh, let's see. The emperor is very much masculine energy. So it's uh, masculine, is, is all about focused energy and it's active and decisive and thorough. And uh, he, he won't easily fall for a ruse. He will see right through that. And, and um, you, you can use that energy to plan, to act, to rebuild. And if you do that, you will build in combination with the healthy choices you will build on solid ground and it, it might be a wee bit awkward for you to tap into this kind of energy of planning, strategizing, having a structure and all that stuff because I, I, I get, I'm getting a sense that you are more the acting on impulse kind of person and that comes up with more cards in your reading. And then it's good to know that there is a time for that as well, to just be impulsive and, you know, to, um, but then it should still be based on something solid like intuition. Um, and, and, but if, if you don't ever have a bit more playfulness in the mix, it will become rigid, right? If it's all structured and planned and organized and, you know, and no space for any creativity, then you get a rigid structure and you don't want that. Then it's basically back to the tower, right? It will just be another tower. It's got to be balanced like the temperance. So both spontaneity and structure, depending on what the situation calls for. Uh, but the, the foundation should be rock solid. Yeah, now uh, on to your next card. Right, um, the next card is Seven of Cups. I must say this is one of the most beautiful Seven of Cups that I've ever seen in any deck. I, I so love this deck, it's gorgeous. Anyhow, Seven of Cups. Here again we see being easily distracted by things and, and in that sense being impulsive, right? Um, and it is okay to consider all the op options that are there, but use the energy of the Emperor and the Lovers to make the right choice. And um, be mindful that you do not go for short-term goals or pleasures that will lead you away from your chosen path. That's very important. It comes up, it will come up again in with other cars. Uh, uh, so consider these options. Uh, take from them what you can. And if there's nothing, then just discard them. 
But no matter what, don't let yourself get distracted from your new path, from what you're building. Right? And um I'm 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 beginning to feel that this maybe is the point that you have difficulty dealing with options, choices, um stay in your course. Uh, maybe you easily lose your uh, attention, determination, or whatever, or, or get in overwhelm, um, yeah, and, and that could be, if that resonates, um, that could be why you ended up in that tower situation, it's almost like to protect yourself from having to make decisions about new things that come up, maybe the overwhelm of having many choices or something, because that, that can be a scary thing, right? If there is an awful lot to choose from and you have not really got a clear sense of direction because you lack and the energy of the emperor, it could be quite scary to, to like, oh my God, what do I do with all this? I don't know, you know? And, and you might go from one to the next, to the next, to the next and back here and, you know, get the, <laughs> distracted and... And that might actually get you more confused if that resonates, right? It might not resonate for everyone, but yeah. The thing is, if if you do get out and stay out of a tower, so to speak, not hide um, behind walls to for perceived protection, but have the inner strength to uh, and and this energy to be outside, so to speak, right, in the open, where you can get flooded then, of course, with options, you will actually have freedom, because you're not restricted. The, the thing is, if you uh, have any kind of protection around you to avoid stuff like that, it also limits you from things you do need. It's, it's not helpful. So if you stay out in the open, you might get exposed to a hell of a lot, and that might be awkward in the beginning, but it is liberating as well. And it's like, you, you will become better at choosing and deciding, and no, that's not for me, that's not for me, that's not for me, and oh, that I want. And the better you are... Um, in balance with that temperance card we had, and also the emperor energy, um, the less you will be flooded with things that don't serve you. That's law of attraction. But if you never go there, if you never practice that, it can't really fine tune either, right? But it is freedom. It's living life. If you if you're out in the open. Yeah, and I do think for many of you this is actually, well, true, because it, it feels so strong. Well, anyhow, let's move on to the next card. And just from the reading, just take what resonates and just dump the rest. And if nothing resonates, well, then it's just not for you. I can't help that. Um, I'm just going with what the cards tell me. Then we have the moon. Um, it's just, again, a similar message to not be led astray by shadowy images and things that seem to be there in the semi-dark of the moonlight, right? And uh, because you can't see clearly in, in moonlight, really, it's not as well lit as when there's full daylight, right? Then fears may come up and, um... That can also come up, of course, because you have left the familiar of the tower and the comfort zone. But um, what comes up here is a lot with the uh, crayfish, is a lot from the subconscious. So it could be that by liberating yourself, with by having the tower moment, um, things from the past come up. And you will have to deal with these things. And you don't have to do that all in one go, you know? You can do that bit by bit. 
uh, it's stuff from the subconscious it can be inner child fears or whatever and I have a clarifier for that for the uh, moon card I'll remove that one for now let's see the uh, now you can see it's a brush my pointer <laughs> anyhow queen of cups very peculiar choice of colors is normally the queen of cups is very watery so blue and this is, is almost like a queen of wands with all the gold and yellow but it is the queen of cups and it's the clarifier i drew for the moon card and the beautiful thing is the queen of cups is also a lot of emotions and feelings being able to handle them but and intuition the moon is also about intuition this is watery energy so is the Queen of Cups. Uh, so they go really well together. Uh, the, the Queen of Cups in this case says that you can handle these emotions that can, may come up here from the subconscious. Fears, emotions, you can handle them. Just stay connected to your heart and what your heart needs. And you can tell by tuning in to your heart and just feeling feeling what what is needed you you know you, you will feel that if it feels good um you can feel the difference between a feeling good for real or ego stuff you, you you will learn that as the more you do that then you will develop your intuition and because i also feel a message to learn to listen to your body your intuition and your emotions so maybe you have been ignoring these for well quite some time that is possible so learn to do that listen to your body what your body needs does it need rest does it need activity does it need food does it need a specific type of food um, do you need a cuddle do you need comfort uh, emotionally what is it you need and can you give it to yourself and your intuition listen to your intuition um, and if you do that it will help greatly to walk your path to make decisions and to feel good and happy and then the last card then we move to an, uh, last uh, another question um, we have the Knight of Pentacles here. I love these beautiful emerald colors. It's wonderful. Very earthy energy as well. Also with these symbols, which is the earth symbol. That. Um, very grounded and stable. Ready and willing to work hard for what you want. But not in a hurry. Because this is a slower energy. This is not really moving fast, you know, and, and maybe at the moment not even going anywhere. But at least it's not rushing into anything. And uh, so again, basically, like not um, doing something on a whim. This, this knight is not going to do that. He will think things through. And if it doesn't feel right, if he's not sure about it yet... He will not do anything. He will wait. He's not going to rush into anything. He's not going to do something on a whim. He might be spontaneous and it's different. Right? But um, yeah. So um, you may also have to learn to take regular breaks. Whether that's to recharge or to plan or to, to simply enjoy life. And maybe you find that difficult to take a break, to enjoy life for a while. Do you tend to just keep going at what you're doing? Whether that's work or doing nothing. And neither is really helpful, right? You have to have a balance of these two. And um, maybe that's why you again need that emperor energy to plan and have structure. As you, so you neither get stuck in indulging and doing nothing then, right? And, or becoming well, kind of like a workaholic or always being uh, doing, 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 being busy and wearing yourself out then that way in the end.
Ja. Um, anyhow, let's go have a look. Three more cards for your reading. Uh, the question will be what do you miss out on if you do not follow that advice? If you stay stuck in the tower, if you try to avoid it or simply do avoid it, what are you going to miss out on? And then we have the Two of Swords. Um, you will miss out on finding the connection and the balance between the head and the heart. Because with this card, you, you, you're not seeing clearly. You can't see anything at all. Um, and your heart is closed. And, and because of the blindfold, um, you're, you're basically living in your own head. So only your own thoughts and beliefs, which are likely very limited, or they have become that, right? Which is logical if there is no fresh input. And you can't have any input like this, because you can't see and you can't feel, because your heart is closed. So that's, you're going to miss out on that big time. And, oh gosh, my kitty cat here is asleep. Um, you need fresh input. And for that, you need to open your heart and your eyes. So you have to remove the blindfold. And because if you if you keep living like this, you are robbing yourself of all the beauty and adventures that life has to offer. And that's really a crime shame if you do that. It will take courage to do this. But you will have that once you go through that tower moment. And tap into that emperor energy and the lovers and the temperance and you know you can you can do that and then we have the uh and maybe you can do that bit by bit you know just have a small peek a little bit of a peek every now and then and just wean yourself of it if you're too scared to do that in one go and your next card what you miss out on is the empress another beautiful card um also very, with the green, very earthy. So this is also very grounded and earthy and or, or earthly. Um, but this is also a really enormous dose of, of, of dose of feminine energy, which is important for both women and men. It's not just for women. And we see the symbol of Venus here. And it's also feminine energy. And feminine energy is about... Uh, connectedness, oneness, nurturing, patience, and also knowing when to act and knowing when it's best to just wait and have that patience, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it, it is very grounded and you will have a healthy inner balance so that neither emotions nor actions become obsessive. So you have that, that, yeah, that came up here with the uh, Knight of Pentacles as well. Yeah, so a good balance. You, you will have that. And um, it, it's just a really beautiful, empowered energy, which we, we, we see enhanced with the last card, the strength, which is also balance. Um, and it's a wonderful card to end with. Uh, when you follow the advice given, you will have a great sense of purpose. And the lion here represents your um, your animal instinct. That and it walks side by side with you. It is on a, on a chain, okay, but the chain is just dangling. It's not really tight or anything at all. So it's just like a friendly cooperation, almost, right? And um, the, 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 the lion can serve as a reserve of strength and courage if you need it. And uh, you can rely on that. And because you have that inner balance, it will not get out of hand. You will not be overtaken by lion energy. You know, it will still remain balanced. Beautiful inner balance. And uh, it's also, again, the, the perfect balance between extremes, right? The beauty and the beast, basically. That came up with the, uh, with the temperance card. 
which was also about balance between extremes. Um, so you have learned here then, if you follow the advice and do all that stuff, you will have learned to handle that and to deal with it. You, you can actually, just, you can just really use it to your advantage as opposed to it maybe hindering you. You know, if you if you get overcome by emotions or whatever, that, that is actually not helpful at all. It hinders your path, even though at the moment it might not seem that way. But if there is a balance and you can use that energy for whatever you wish to create, that's good. Then it has become truly your strength. Yeah. So, yeah, this is what I have for you. And I do hope it resonates because I, uh, yeah, this is quite something to do. It's uh, quite unusual, uh, the topic, I mean, right? So I hope it resonates and I'm thanking you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye. Right, numbers two. Your first card, we have the ones, two. Uh, you are at a crossroads and you have to choose. You cannot stay here any longer. Um, and you also can't be like the squirrel uh, who distracts himself with everything and then just by the end, in a way, has an excuse to stay where he is. You can also not be like that rabbit, uh, too afraid to make a choice and to make a bold move, right? You just have to go and do something, make a choice. And the choice is not uh, from the head, it's not a logical choice. It's, it's one of sensing what to do, where to go, and then also having the courage to, to do it. And again, you cannot stay at the standstill of where you currently are. You have to make a decision and go. And with your next card, the Five of Swords, we see that it is likely not going to be easy to do that. It requires a battle that might be fierce. Right? I mean, just look at it. There's him, he's got the swords, and there's the other people there. And so it has been quite the battle. And uh, you can do this and be victorious, but it will not be a victory to enjoy. It's not, um, yeah, you know, sometimes you have battles that you cannot avoid, but they don't bring us pleasure. we rather not do it, but sometimes you have no choice. It just needs to be done. And it can be to make a very clear point, uh, or to deal with opposition, or it can even be your own inner demons. But if I don't think that, I think it's more to do with an external thing. And it feels like, um, don't mess with me kind of situation where you don't want to fight, but you also don't want to put up with the situation any longer either and then there is no other option you either put up with it or you have this fight right and and that's why there is no joy in it it's not like yeah i won no not at all but you just have to do that in order to move on yourself um um at the same time it's also a message to oh sorry uh that's that's um, I'm lost now. <laughs> um, yeah, just that. Next card we're going to is the uh, the Knight of Cups. Uh, let's see. That was pile one. I don't want that mixed up yet. Right, the Knight of Cups. Again, like the Queen is the same in this deck. It's a, a bit of an odd choice of colour. I'd, I'd take this for the Knight of Flames. Oh, sorry, of Flames. <laughs> well, in a way, fiery, right? The the Knight of Wands. Because of the colours, the, the uh, fiery orange. But it is the Knight of Cups. Um, this says that after... Uh, hard times, good times will follow. 
it's like this this, this wheel this, that goes around, right? The cycles of life and, and flow. And this card tells you to uh, relax and enjoy life. And you may really need that after having fought the battle of the Swords 5 that we just had. Um, it is also possible that you were stuck at the crossroads of the Wands 2, um, that you haven't taken the time to enjoy life for quite some time because you were just there stuck 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 right and not enjoying life at all anymore um it's also the message to not get lost in fantasizing or chasing dreams that will never come true so don't lose yourself in that um and of course it's not the idea to get stuck in enjoying and indulging, right? Because then you will not get anywhere either. There is an, an a flow. Like after active times, there's taking a break. And then after a while, to start moving again. And then back to resting again. And etc, etc. It just, it's like a wheel. So don't get stuck in indulging. And uh, your next card, we have the uh, star. And you need to have faith that you do not ever run out of whatever it is you give. Uh, don't feel lack. Like the star, she is freely pouring water from her pictures in full faith that she will never run out, that there's always enough. And... To have that faith requires inner balance and feeling grounded and connected to the universe, hence the star on her forehead, which is connected to the star up there. Um, um, so make sure you keep yourself balanced so you can come into this beautiful energy of harmony and faith and trust that you will always have enough. Even when you are generous, right? So you not think like, oh my God, if I spend this or if I give this, that and the other. And you actually really do that from the heart. And But then think, oh my God, my wallet is almost empty now. Oh dear. And then get into worry um, and in lack, fear of lack, right? And don't. Just trust that you are taken care of and you will always have enough. Um... And then we go to the, again, all that water. We had the Knight of Cups. Here we have the water with the star. And now here we have the King of Cups. So again, all that water. Um, I think the sun has gone a bit. I can turn it. Yes. Um, the King of Cups. You may have achieved much, um, but it is as if during that process, along the way, you have lost touch with your creative side in spite of having achieved a lot, right? So you have to seek a creative outlet and nurture your emotions. Don't focus, again, <laughs> don't focus on what's missing on lack. And, you know, the star spoke of that as well. You uh, focus on, yeah, that there is enough on having enough, on the good things, the positive things. Otherwise, you might, you, 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 you risk becoming oh, oh, a little bit bitter, maybe, or resentful, or at least stagnant. You won't go anywhere. So it's really important that you find creative outlets. And that doesn't have to be work-related, although if you could do that in your work, it's, it's absolutely great. But just for yourself. Just whatever it is you like to do makes you feel happy and good and inspired and recharged, etc. Find something or start doing something again, right? Um, then we move on to the Pentacle 7. Um, now, this may be a very important one for you to bear in mind. When you have planted seeds and the harvest is about to be ready and picked. Take stock of this harvest. Does it meet your expectation? Was it worth the time and energy you put into it? 
because this doesn't grow overnight, right? It takes time. So was it worth it? And um, and if not, what can you do different next time? So it is according to your wishes and expectations. And also, if yes, if it is, do if it is according to how you want it, etc. Is it something you want to sow or plant again? <clears throat> Very important to not just keep doing something. Also, when it works out, when the harvest is great, you know, not to just automatically do it again because the, this harvest was great. Maybe you need something different next time. So be aware. Don't be too neglectful of what you have sown. And don't just expect things to work uh, the way you wanted or hoped either. Because it just doesn't work that way. At least not yet. Not at this point in your time. Maybe at some point it will. But maybe not. But not now. Growing crop always needs tending to. And like a farmer may uh, see that a certain crop doesn't grow well on his land... And that he better plants another type next next year. You should do the same. Yes, that can happen, right? Sometimes the soil isn't fertile. Or not fertile yet. Or not anymore. And you need to do something different. And uh, farmers pay very close attention to that sort of thing. And um, so, yeah. If, so if you have, may have... If you have made attempts to achieve something and it failed, the reason for it may lay here. Not paying attention too much. Or maybe relying too much on what it said on the box. That's not literal, right? But what about your own input? Um, it's just like always... Be aware of how your produce, let's call it that, is doing. If it isn't going to plan according to plan, why not? And that doesn't mean that you will have to then throw out um, the whole lot. It's first you have to look and learn to find out why it didn't go according to plan. And remember that you have to tend to your crop whilst it's growing. Don't expect things to just go well by themselves after you've sown them. You will need to water them. Maybe you have to provide some shade or remove pests that eat away at your crop, etc. Be present with your projects, right? And that can concern... Uh, basically anything and everything, right? It can also be simple, stupid stuff like, uh, for instance, in love. Um, I'm just going to give an example to make it clear. And, uh, in, in, in matters of love, you want a lover and you go on a dating site, you make a profile and that's about it. You don't do anything other than that. You just make a profile, up, upload a few photos, you have a good uh, profile text, but you don't do anything much apart from that. and But at the same time, you are expecting that Mr. or Mrs. Wright is going to turn up at your doorstep. Well, it's it's just not going to work that way. Right? You have to tend to things. You have to be present. You have to yeah do stuff as well yourself. Maybe start a conversation or reply to messages or whatever. And it's, it's that kind of thing. To not think like, okay, I plant this and that's it and now it's going to come to me. And yeah, well, play with that in your mind. It's it's sort of that kind of thing. <laughs> and I think that this is actually the most important part for you of the entire reading. This energy, this, this way of doing things. Um, now we're going to the next one. I hope that was clear, by the way. Sometimes it's really difficult. Uh, 
Yeah, because I feel it and I sense it, it is in my head, then that way, right? And I have to translate it as well. <laughs> Anyhow, next card we have Four of Cups. I love this. It, isn't it gorgeous? It's, it, I think it's the, the most beautiful Four of Cups I've ever seen. He's actually sort of looking at that one. That's what you usually never see. Anyhow. <clears throat> um... There is another message to not get too sucked into things. We had that before as well. I can't remember which card now, but it comes up again. To not get too sucked into things that you may not see the value of a new opportunity that is right in front of you. Because he's looking at it, but he's not really, really seeing it, you know, because he's too sucked up in his story, his book. Um... And that can be th what you've already achieved, what you're uh, sucked into, I mean, but also the story that you have created. This is also important. We all have stories. We don't think of them as stories, right? We all, but we do all have stories in our head. I'm this kind of person. Now I'm, I'm not very patient and I'm not this, that and the other. I am like that and blah, de, blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. If I do that, it's not going to work out. And although these kind of blah, blah stories <laughs> don't serve us in the slightest. And um, we all have that. Uh, it's just that most of us do not pay attention to it. But these stories are constantly being played in our head um, from the subconscious like a non-stop recording. It just never ends. It just always goes up. Maybe maybe it stops when you meditate and when you sleep. Um, and, but that's it, I think. Um, anyhow. Uh, completely lost. <laughs> uh, that was about the stories. Um, yeah, and then there's usually about things that you believe or are convinced of uh, that you picked up from uh, reactions from other people or what other people have told you and whatever, you know, or what you yourself have made up. Um, but make, it's just make sure you remain flexible and open to the new, what's around you. Uh, so you can add to your story and maybe write an entirely new one, right? The, um, these stories, these things is really, is really important. Like Abraham X is also always talking about that very much. Um, tell a different story. If you always tell yourself, think in, in your head, like, uh, I can't do that. If I, if I, if I try to do that, it, it never going to work. You know, it always works for other people, but nah, it's not going to work for me. That kind of shit. Uh, and it can be any topic. Just start telling a different story, a positive one. And the more you do that and practice that and rehearse that, the more, uh, you start to attract different things in your life. And um, and the more these old stories start to slip into the background and just at some point they will just peter out, you know. And um, then you can also see what is around you, the value of things. Yeah, of new things, new opportunities. And not live in these, these stupid old stories so much. Uh, anyhow, uh, let's move on because I can keep talking forever, I think. Uh, we have the Eight of Wands. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, anyhow, I, I'm just going to tell you. I got something with this I never felt with the Eight of Wands. Um, things have been set in motion and it's moving fast, right? This is really fast-moving energy, the Eight of Wands. And it's in beautiful order. They absolutely beautifully synchronize these ones like rockets and where they will descend descend and land is already determined um almost like rockets right you don't just shoot off a rocket and it's like well i'm just gonna wait and see where there's gonna be an explosion when it hits now you just set a target so these so this, this is the same with these ones that their landing positions 
well, it's it's determined. Um, and that also feels in a way like a bit of a warning to not interfere in any way. Because you cannot see the larger picture of what's going on. And if you were to remove or change the course of one of these wands, the others will be affected as well. Because they're very intricately connected. But since you don't know and see, that's a good thing to remember. And... Um, yeah, and then the, the thing is, how to tell when you can or should make changes is by, um, I think, by being tuned in to your intuition. And as long as you don't row upstream, but only downstream, you're good to go. And you can feel that when you go upstream, because then it doesn't feel good. And mostly we do that, we start rowing upstream, uh, out of ego and ego is like fear pain uh, guilt uh, pride maybe even you know, whatever you know and then you go upstream and that will not feel good and um, there being such a delicate process may not always be the case but it is right now in your life, so make sure you go with the flow and don't try to um, interfere with what's going on. Yeah, it, this, this feels, and that's what I meant that I've never had that before with this card, it feels like divi divine orchestration and that is beyond your wheelhouse to start messing around with. So be careful and uh, yeah, how to tell when you can do something or change something. Well, like I said, stay tuned into your intuition and make sure you're going with the flow. And um, in, in a way, what is required in this um, is the faith of the star. So keep your inner balance, remain grounded, go downstream. And have faith. And remember, right? Downstream is like, when it feels light, it is right. That's how it feels when you go downstream. That's okay. So if there's a change you want to make or do something, and it feels light, and it feels right, then it's, it's good. Then it's okay. And if it doesn't, then don't do it. Yeah. And, okay, next, the last few cards for you. Um, what are you going to miss out on if you do not follow this advice, if you don't do this? And we have the Ace of Swords missing, sorry, having clarity. That's what you're going to miss out on. Um, having clarity and the will and the power to create wondrous things. Also from clarity uh, and good intentions. That's important here as well. And when the sword is wielded without having clarity, it can wreak havoc and it can then create hurt and upset for yourself, but also other people. And um, it can backfire then as well, right? Um, so make sure your intentions are right and you will have that. If you have done all that work, you will know, you, you will have that. And... Um, um, yeah, and you, you are very much aware of what you use your powers and gifts for. Yeah. And that way you will have clarity and see the way forward. Yeah, the intentions are very important. When you, you know, when you make decisions or do stuff or whatever, that you, that you have the clarity and the right intentions, then you can't really go wrong. Again, in a way, this if it feels light, it's right, I think. Uh, and what you also miss out on is the Eight of Cups, um, which is um, not following. You will not go and follow your soul calling. What it, this? That's what this card is about. You will continue to distract yourself with what's here, with these cups there, and... Um, 
And, and these cups, that can be anything, including achievements even, right? That brought satisfaction for a while, but no longer really the case. It, it, it's, it's, it's just sheer lingering in your comfort zone. And basically, uh, that's straight back to uh, the wants to that we had in the beginning and ignoring the calling that you actually really do feel very strongly. So being then it's yeah, like the, let's see if I can quickly get the uh, wants to here where you are stuck at a crossroads and have to make a choice. Right? So yeah, you will miss out on that. You will you really have a soul calling and, and you will have to follow that calling. Um, so it's very, it is just very important to leave this scenario and follow that calling. Um, and with that, you will get to true fulfillment. But you have to be aware, there's always a but, isn't there? <laughs> uh, that you're not being misled by the moon's light, which can obscure things. And clearly put... It basically, I think, comes down to making sure that you're not running away from something that you don't want to deal uh, with or whatever, and taking that for a soul calling. So know the difference. If there are any loose ends to tie up to finish here, then do that first before you leave, and then you move on, right? And again... But doing that is where the Ace of Swords comes into play. So you have, um, you can use that to cut away any confusion. Also, uh, confusion concerning why you are leaving. Are you is it escapism or not? Right? You can use the energy, the power of the Ace of Swords, so you do have clarity and you do have the right intentions, and you also have dealt with loose ends in this current situation where you are now. And then we're going to move to your last two cards. We have for you the Queen of Wands. Um, I feel this is the point, the moment, the place where you find your passion. Your X marks the spot. There it is. You know, you got it. Your soul calling. You're in your power, your element. You're empowered. And um, you're allowing it to bubble gently but steadily, right? It's um, because it's the, the queen, not the king. The king is more of an, a sudden, abrupt, abrupt uh, outburst of energy, of whatever. And um, the queen is more um, subtle, more gentle in that sense. So it's like, it's not like a volcano uh, or anything. It's like... Um, because that could even, if you have a giant burst, like a volcano, that could even lead to a burnout in the end. But this is a steady, gentle, bubbling flow that is not going to stop. It's, it's almost like an eternal light that will shine night and day without wearing you out. A very beautiful place to be. Uh, and... and Whatever or wherever the place or situation, this is where your soul longs to be and go to. Yeah. And you will get there, right? If you do what's required, you will get there. Isn't that beautiful to know? <laughs> and then your last card, we have the Hermit. And I, th I love this card so much. I don't know why. It's just like, it's, it really speaks to me. Um, you will be following your own path and lighting it up yourself with your own wisdom, the lamp, right? And at the same time, you also shine your light and will be a guiding light for other people. Even when you are not doing anything specifically to achieve that, you will still do that. You're just a shining light, a light worker, I suppose. Um, you do have a lot to share as you have gained an awful lot of wisdom and knowledge throughout life, or at least by the time you get to this point of reaching your sole purpose. And you can share that. And from sharing that, you yourself will also um, grow further, right? It's, it's a, teaching is, um, is a, a reciprocal thingy. It's not a one-way street. And... 
the, the, the hermit will keep learning anyway and evolving and yeah it's it's not uh, someone that stands still which is good you know that's the best way to go through life to always be learning and evolving and um yeah, it's just less the way it's supposed to be. No standing still, following what you feel is right. And if it doesn't work anymore, the hermit, then you, will also have the strength, which is the staff, right? To back him up, to support, etc., etc. To shed it, like the hermit's companion. The, this is his companion, the snake. So then um, you can do that as well when you have gotten to that point where you have that inner strength and are empowered and so on and so forth that came up with the um, Queen of Wands, you can also just shed what doesn't belong in your world anymore, what doesn't serve you no longer, whether that's uh, things or uh, a place you live or people's a situation, you will be able to do that, right? And yeah, I like it. Absolutely beautiful cards to end with. Um, so, yeah, if you do the required work, you will get where you really long to go, to live how and where you really want to live and to be who you truly are. So, well, that's worth it, isn't it? So that's it with all I have for you. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful and resonated. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.